I was going to drill it. He said, dude, where's your plier drawer? So we go in here and it's funny. You always, you know, as a mechanic, got a million different, you know, pliers that you're going to use. And he walks back with my garage find channel box. And Kenny, you've got to take over, man. Right. Hey, friend. Smash that subscribe button. It really helps us out. Also, we have hundreds of videos and playlists on here for you. And then we started adding timestamps, so a lot of the videos you can jump around and get right to the information you want. And then we even start adding captions so you can pick your language. Enjoy the video. Hey friends, Shane from HunterWrench.com and my pal Kenny. He's a landscaper by trade. And it was funny because earlier we grabbed a pair of channel locks to hold like a shift drum or something with a rag. He's oh man, you know how to actually use channel locks. I'm sitting there kind of laughing going, yeah, well, I, I really didn't think about it much. But he started, you know, chatting about how he has to teach people all the time in his field how to use these proper for leverage and so on. So that's only part of the story. We keep working on the motor. We get to a point where taking off this ignition pickup and two of these screws with, don't even get on my case here, we've got a Vessel JIS Impact number two, I'm gonna call it to the American number two size driver, which is the right one. Two of them came off really easy. And then of course we had one where probably a mile of thread locker or something and just wasn't coming. So what do you do? Well, normal thing you do, you're gonna hop into your, you know, fancy dancy. I love this one, my favorite tools, my uh, Snap-on Impact driver. You've seen me use this in a million videos, show how to do it, super awesome. But the number two just started causing damage. I had a different like Craftsman number two, it wasn't working. Once it was widened out, I went to the number three, started to get a bite, but then it just started widening out. And I was like, okay, wait a second. I'm gonna go to my old trusty Snap-on little pliers here okay i've got two versions the original one and then the newer one neither of those would grab these are epic because of this kind of tapered off edge on there and i'm like usually pretty lucky i can get in here and grab onto this and go ahead and get out and kenny said well man that's gonna be really hard look how wide that grip is it's gonna be hard to grab it i said well, okay let's go with the old school one so we grab these and he's like, nah, that, that's still kind of wide. I'm like, dude, you got to show me what you're talking about here. And I'm like, wait, I got one more. I got the vampire pliers with the crazy teeth and grips on there. Get in there. Couldn't get anything. Just wanted to slip off. So I was going to drill it. He said, dude, where's your plier drawer? So we go in here and it's funny. You always, you know, as a mechanic, got a million different, you know, pliers that you're going to use. And he walks back with my garage find channel locks and kenny you've got to take over man right. so anyways yep channel locks the little ones are awesome this worked out perfectly because we can get these for Let's one they're, look at the teeth like yeah for one it's thin enough so we can kind of get on that bolt and for two we can open this head up enough so we can get these handles close enough together so we can get the grip leverage we want and we can work on basically pushing as opposed to focusing on trying to get a grip. Before you do that, can you show like on these, just making a point, cause you say you got to teach guys this all the time in the field. Yeah, so just like a pipe wrench, your channel locks. Here, grab a like yeah. example of a yeah. pipe. So if this was my pipe and I wanted to loosen this, this is the correct way to loosen it. And if I try to do it like this, essentially the, the the force is going to keep trying to open the channel lock so you're going to be working more on keeping it closed yeah and less on actually so you're losing your grip because you're, you're the claw pressure is being lost because when you do it the right way yeah. you're literally putting weight on it to right. physically close when you're doing it, it right you can hold it a little bit and you could smack this with a hammer and it would not lose grip because yeah. you're applying more force because this jaw is being pressed up into the bottom so you're essentially using all your effort to turn it and not grip it so same yeah. thing applied on the little one so what, what's funny, I kind of joke about this all the time. What do you want to bet if we went to Channel Lock's website that there's actually an SOP or has manual? To be, yeah. Has to be, because it's an intentional design. Yeah. Where'd you learn it? I just figured it out, messing up a lot of stuff. Yeah? Well, that's one way to learn it, yeah. right? And that's true, right? But why don't we go back to the, because my mind's still blown because here we are in my shop, my toolbox, I would not have grabbed that. I would have grabbed my drill and I would have went to work, right? And especially for never thinking that I've ever had much success on this, go ahead and show us. Let's just show us what you did here. Yeah. Pull that motor back up. Okay. It's all about positioning. You want to be in the right spot get the teeth as far open as possible. I just cannot believe so that. So now we have we have the maximum grip because these are almost all the way closed. 
and we're going to have uh, a, a lot of traction there, and then we can focus on pushing as opposed to Dude, it's uh, just trying to keep it gripped. Um, here it is, you know, been doing this a lot of years. I wonder how many fasteners I could have had easier luck with <laughs> uh, thinking about channel locks. I have a completely new respect for channel locks and leverage, like completely new. And it's funny, I wonder if I have any, any other sizes in here. They're gonna get moved to like the front of the <laughs> grab pile for save the First day. <laughs> hey friends, this is something I talk a lot about. You know, sometimes it's just fun to work with and work with people in other industries and other fields. There was a guy in here yesterday that was a hot rod guy bought one of my lifts and it was fun talking about how it's all nuts and bolts so if you like this video and you like you thought man that was a really useful tip you're gonna love this channel there's one playlist called every mechanic should know this this is definitely getting dumped in there for that cool stuff but man kenny you saved the day dude with a extremely vintage I bet, you know. Can you sell those to me? I want them now. Yeah, right? <laughs> you don't have a pair? Not that small. Yeah. I got this set next size up. Kenny literally went home, went to the website, found these, and got them ordered. And no more than a day later, he had a set in his toolbox. So we'll put the link below in the description, but they are real and easy to buy. What's funny is now I'm going to, like, look for those at yeah. garage sales. Because, yeah. like... You know, how many times have you probably just walked right past yeah. and been like, what, what am I ever going to use that for? Share this with your buddies that you know could use this as well. We're going to get back at it. We are, we just got the transmission all set up and figured out what we need for that. And we're going to get into the crankshaft. I am going to be making a video on how to select the right size plane bearings for a crankshaft and for connecting rods. You might really enjoy that. That'll be coming too. Once again, lots of videos on the Moto Gymkhana GSXR 750 build, a million other things. So like share subscribe as always make it a great day and keep wrenching